was there ever a time in any of your lives where you thought you wanted to stop playing or you thought about quitting music or leaving your musical life behind and then came back to music, obviously, because you're all here? And what was that story like or what brought you back into the music world? You know, you, you go through stages in life. As a young child, you become a teenager, you know, um, then you develop situations in life. You have a family, bills, you start working. Um, it looks good when you're young. When, when things start popping, you have a lot of kids, you have a house, you know, things are parents, unfortunately, to start passing away. Things are different. Um, you know, there comes a time in your life where you have to be really focused and at some time in that process, yeah, you start thinking, man, should I have not done this? Or should I have been a banker? Or maybe I should have done this gig. Or maybe I should have taken this gig or something. It's a natural process that you go through as a, as a young musician or any young thing that you do. You, you start thinking and you start betting that things will be different on the other side of the fence. And, you know, most of the time it's not. But you have to have faith in what you do and you have to really believe in what you do and continue that because in the long run it'll pay off you know sometimes what happens as a young musician and i've experienced is that you think that you're going to be glorified or your glorification is going to happen at a very young age and sometimes that doesn't happen until probably after you're dead and you don't see that as it happens, you know, and you got to continue to fight with learning and producing other students and, and sharing your knowledge with everyone else. So that happens. And I'm sure everyone up here has, you know, hit the wall for a minute and said, man, I should have done something else. But you just got to fight through it. And just if you really love what you do and believe, you should be able to pass that wall and go to the next one. You know, this one more thing on that. Uh, for many people, their vocation is, is what they do, but for others, the lucky ones, it's who you are. Yeah, it happens. And then you reach a midlife crisis. <laughs> you got a ways to go. Don't worry about that yet. I'm not going to even burden you with a thought of it. I'm just going to tell you it's real. Yes. Um, so my question is, um, as like a young musician or as a leader in like the context of a band or just in general, um, how do you kind of balance like wanting to encourage other people to play the music of jazz and supporting other people who are playing the music as jazz with like wanting other people to work hard and wanting to push other people to get better? Who wants that? Walter? The two are synonymous. Playing jazz is all about getting better because it's based on improvisation. And so in order to do something well, you got to work at it. You have to practice. So I'm not sure if that was your exactly what your question was, but if you want to try to encourage people as a leader or as a part of a group to get better through playing jazz, practice, you know, um, even if what you're doing is not music, the fact that you have this experience is what makes you a better person even when you do other things. And that's why it's important that we're all here, even though some of you might become musicians and some of you may not. The fact that you try your best at something is what makes you a greater person. So if you could convey that through, short, through example, through trying your best, not that you have to actually be the best at what you do, but the fact that you try your best helps you to realize your own personal potential. And that spreads like an infection in a positive way. So the yep. person next to you says, wow, man, I can see she's really trying her best. And I like that. I want to try my best too. That's another form of positive and healthy competition as well. Hmm. Yep. If I may, if I may add to that, Trust is a factor, you know, if you, especially being a leader. If you um, instill and also knowing what you want in terms of what your sound, of your ideal sound of what your band wants, to, of what your band is, you have to know what you want and then convey it to the other, to your other bandmates. 
in some way, form, or fashion, whether it's by example or whether it's by telling them and, and you know, just letting them know, pointing things here and there. And then, you know, as you as you told them, you know, just trust that your your other bandmates and also trust yourself. You know, trust that they're gonna get everything together, you know, by a certain time or or what have you. If you have a deadline, great. If not, so be it. But trust is a ma is a major factor, and it's also it'll also be evident when you all are playing together, and you are when you know when you trust trust all your bandmates and and the, and the time. Trust the time. Trust trust the rhythms. Trust that they're gonna lead you in a certain direction. And, 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 you know, in, in, especially during solos and, and improvisation and playing ensemble parts, all that is, all that is important. So, trust. And, and Walter actually used the word example up in there, but to make it even clear, to lead by example. You know, if you want somebody to get up at four o'clock in the morning to do something for you, get up at four o'clock in the morning and do it with them. You want them to travel around the world with you? Don't send them out, do all the grunt work beforehand, and then come out and celebrate the, the positivities of it. Be out there and do the grunt work with them. You lead by example, people will follow by example. If you want them to be great, you'd be great. That will make them want to be great. I've seen this man to my far right on the bandstand. He's been a talented person on many, many bandstands, but he's never let his quality of playing sink down. He always lifted up. So you have to have you have to lift people up that are around you. And if you're lucky, they'll lift you up as well. And another thing is you have to recognize people. I mean, I've made the point. We have different relationships. Okay, Victor and I went to kindergarten together. When I look at the band, we have so many great musicians. If I'm going to lead a band of people who can play this well, they want to play the music. If the music is about me, I mean, they'll play it, but I, it's, it's like if I can't, Chris Crenshaw can just hear anything. Let me give you a prime example of it. And you play with a band with him. Let's say you're looking at something. You can't actually hear it. He really can hear it. You're in front of the band and you say it's a G. He says, that's an F sharp. But he's probably right. Now the band is looking at you. So what do you, do you cling to? It's a G when you know he knows it's an F sharp. And they all know it too. You got to know how to say, yeah, you know, it's probably an F sharp because Chris heard it. Another example with us, I just give you examples in the band. I'm notoriously not good at counting off tempos and notoriously a sad conductor. When I went in front of the band to conduct, at this time, Wes Anderson was playing alto, and every time I miss a cue, he would look down into the stand and go, get back in the trumpet section. <laughs> now, before I count the tune off, I'm going to look at Ali. Ali, what is the tempo for this? I'll ask Ryan, what is the tempo of this one? Or Chris. What is the tempo for it? We all know. We, we all know what each other's challenges. I'm the lead. I can't play off. Now, in our band, it's different because we all lead different. If Sherman writes music, he's leading. If Ted does a show, he's leading. If a, so we all work for each other. And this is, this is a Jazz and Linga Center Orchestra. I'm one of the founders of it, but eventually I won't be here and we will still be here. So also take your age relationship to musicians who happen to be. Okay, I sit next to a person who I'm supposed to be XX on a trumpet, great, I can play all this. He can play stuff I can't play. We all know that. We sit in the same section. And sometimes I will ask him, how would you play that? I'm not asking him not to patronize him. Then he says, I would play it like this. Okay, for me, Marcus, Kenny, we all relax because that's what it is. The truth is what it is. It doesn't need to be. And it's hard to be truthful all the time. It's hard. To, it's a difficult... At one point between Ali and, and Walter and I, I knew them since they were kids. So I was used to talking to them like they were 12 or 13 years old. At a certain point, they were tired of that. So they were like, look, man, you don't address us like this. Hey, well, that's hard for me, too, because I'm used to, man, what y'all mean? I'm not talking to y'all no kind of way. What are y'all? Hey, I'm, we're telling you, you're doing this and that. Look, let me know when I'm doing that to y'all. Okay, it's going to take me a while. I'm used to doing this a certain way. Okay, over the course of those years, this four or five year period, I had to. You have to make a lot of adjustments. It can't just be about what you want to do. You know, and these are human things. It's a part of being everything in life. Whether you're a parent, any of us who are parents, we get to a certain age, our kids are no longer 12 or 13. You got to be like, you know what I mean? And that's one thing Art Blakey always said. He said, you got to, to be a leader, you have to have gigs. If you don't have a gig, you're not a leader. He said, number two, pay people on time even though he didn't always do that. Pay people on time. That was his number two. 
The other thing, I'm going to rephrase it. I'm not going to use the same words he used. 